quarto. É filho um beijo. Dear friends, welcome to Godlywood Studio and to Light of Knowledge. In the last episode, we have seen how far food is important in our life. We all like nutritious food, we all like tasty food, we want to take balanced diet. But there is another spiritual element in our food also. How food affects the mind. This has been the main topic of our conversation. And to take this conversation further, we have Rupa Benji with us. Let us welcome her. Benji, once again, welcome. Thank you. So today also we continue with food. You said in the last episode that food has an impact on mind and mind also has an impact on yes. food. Can you uh, explain it further? Food is a physical thing that we are taking and the substances, whatever we collect, maybe it is grains or mm. vegetables mm. or even water and milk. So we prepare many different items with these ingredients. But while preparing the quality of thoughts we are creating in our mind mm. constantly fills the energy in the food. Mm. One important thing like in India we have the habit of keeping a glass which is actually the glass means there will be a particular uh, metal type glass mm. which will be prepared by copper mm. um, or silver mm. and in that we fill water and keep in front of god and goddesses mm -hmm. or in any temples mm. and uh, even in temples after worshipping or doing all rituals uh, the priest will give a spoon of water which is known as holy water and that much the water whatever we drink the same water is kept there but after doing the rituals or uttering the mantra or some holy words or sometimes being in silence, we are going to charge that water. And uh, once we keep in front of that idol, the place which is protected with positive uh, environment, that is known as a holy water. Mm. So this itself, uh, sometimes there are so many miracles people have experienced by just drinking little bit of that holy water, their tensions have become mm. uh, released and some diseases in the body that also gets cured mm. like this so many miracles. I think Benji, we need to discuss it even de in detail because many people think it is just a hoax, it is all about deceiving people, this holy water and all. So I think we need to discuss it. Before going into that, I would like to ask you one question from what you said. Uh, you said we need to have good thoughts while cooking food. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what kind of thought we should have or is there any mechanism for it? See, while preparing food, people don't give much attention about their mind. Mm -hmm. Our mind can be thinking somebody who is not uh, in good relation or with someone we are having too much of attachment mm. both are counted as a negative thoughts only because when there is attachment i am focusing all my energy there mm. and here to whom i am preparing i am not passing so actually suppose i am going to prepare food so how should i set my mind what kind of thought should i generate uh, we practice while preparing food the ingredients what we have collected, it is given by God Almighty mm. and from the nature. Mm. So first of all, we thank God for giving this ingredients today so that I can prepare with His remembrance and give food to the body. There is a difference between I want to enjoy food and another thought, I give food to this body. Mm. So when I think that I am the master, the soul, and giving food to my body, then there is detachment. Mm. And while eating also, there will be so much of detachment. And uh, if I am attached to the food and taste and all such things, then sometimes even little taste is different, my mind get disturbed. I have seen people um, who have, uh, while taking food, if at all not to their uh, best of their taste, immediately they get angry and they throw the plate and scold the person who is cooked mm. and all mm. these things happens. 
this also actually we are disregarding God and also the nature who has given us so much of uh, uh, what we say the wealth of nature to survive. So, here with yogic way of preparation, first of all we thank God Almighty and then while preparing we prepare with positive thoughts that today any good thought you can take in that way and while preparing see that your focus is with your soul conscious state and second thing with communication of God. Mm. Can you can I explain a little bit? Yeah, I think that I am preparing this food for my Supreme Father mm. and because before I give to somebody or I take for myself, I should offer this to him. Mm. Then only this food, a ordinary substances, ingredients turns into a form of food and then it becomes a purified food. Mm. How when I offer to the supreme, the supreme energy means the pure energy fills in it. And that is why we have a system of after preparing the food, we offer in a very systematic way even for 3 to 5 minutes, we sit in silence and remember the supreme father and ask him, request him to accept the food mm. and charge that food with his power and blessings and love. Mm. And just imagine a food which is filled with God's love, how sweet it will be, how delicious it will be and how strengthening if we take that food. Mm. And therefore, we take very ordinary food, you know, it is not with a very uh, tasty and so many other ingredients. Every day we are not going to prepare every special item, but whatever the ordinary food we are preparing, it tastes very delicious. Mm. In my experience, many times in our center, we have prepared absolutely simple food. Simple food in the sense, not of much vegetables or not of much uh, spicy all that, but after offering to the Supreme Father, to whom we say here Shri Baba, Baba is the beloved father. So, lovingly you offer him and ask him to receive and accept and uh, fill that food with his energy and love. And after we serve to anybody, they say we have never tasted such a delicious food. Mm. This itself shows how our thought energy which is pure and tuned with the supreme. After offering him, if we take that becomes a holy food. Benji, most of the people who are in touch with the institution Brahma Kumaris are aware of the fact that Brahma Kumaris and Brahma Kumaris does not take onion as part of their diet. What could be the reason for this? Onion Especially and God. when onion is known as a highly medicinal vegetable also. See, in this uh, nature's resources, there are so many plants, so many fruits and so many other things which are counted as medicinal. Mm. Yet, some we have to select. Mm. A good meditation, a good yogic state can be achieved with the support of the pure food with what we take. Mm. And people usually complain that I like to contact God, I like to communicate with God, I want to experience peace of mind, I want to keep my mind always calm, but I fail every time because there is so much of disturbances in my mind. Mm. So, not only that they are willing to be peaceful, but yet they are not able to. Mm. The reason, one of the reason, this is food. Mm. This is where the onion and garlic which we do not take usually, this is because though it is counted as a medicinal, mm. but for a yogic stage, if I want to keep my mind composed, mm. calm and peaceful, onion and garlic is a substance which provokes me mm. and uh, it creates more and more aggressiveness and which triggers the mind to get uh, uh, loose temper mm. very quickly and maybe angry mood and uh, immediately reactive mood. This kind of uh, experiences are more with this food because even you see onion and garlic while cutting also you get tears mm -hmm. because it is so hot and just imagine when I eat that how it will because whatever food we are preparing and eating that is finally getting 
to the streams of blood right mm. as a in the form mm. of energy mm. and that blood only is circulated in our brain mm. and uh, just imagine a vehicle having uh, filled the petrol which is mixed with other substance what will be the effect though the driver is good mm. so there will be some disturbance now and then see, maybe that is the reason why when our temple system and devotion started uh, all over cs and uh, many people they kept away from onion and onion is not a part of the food which is prepared in the temple from earlier times yes even Maybe. for deities we don't uh, offer the food which is mm. uh, with onion and garlic mm. both and uh, many people are aware but what happens they have never um uh, practiced or tried with hot onion mm. and when they come to brahma kumaris when they eat the food here without preparing onion it is tasting so nicely they say is it possible to prepare food without onion and garlic mm. also i think and at times so. they are not even aware that uh, onion was not there ah, yes. because uh, the taste is so good and nobody noticed the difference so benji i think we need to discuss ah uh, that's why i said we he, we have to have the attitude of selecting selecting one one thing may be good in one area but mm. may not be in another area mm. not that we are rejecting it mm. but we have to choose what best for myself mm. if i want to attain the state of peaceful and uh, pure state and especially in the western countries i think they are now conducting research where they can extract only that part of onion mm. which is used as a medicine, medicine and in the future maybe that those experiments will help us so that we can use onion as only a medicine and avoid it from our food bench now it is time for our question so today that was a discussion about food and we will continue this discussion further because there are even more questions coming to the mind as to how a spiritual food can be prepared so now friends it is now time for the question of the day i am mahesh tandel i am a retired chemist we have many religious and many conflicts how can we bring all religion under one umbrella benji there are many religions of course and uh, many people believe that all these conflicts are because there are lots and lots of religions so is it possible that we can bring everything under one umbrella or is it just a dream the question is uh, having so many religions how all can come on the same one platform mm. let us visualize this too many religions as different different branches of the single tree mm. now a group of people different belief system people are holding one one branch feeling that this is what is superior mm. and what they are believing is the only the right thing like that but less they understand that we are all related to one tree and we are hanging in different different branches mm. so to bring these different religious belief system and also believers under one um, let us say umbrella we have to understand the root and the seed of this all religions mm. so religion always stands on the platform of spirituality and spirituality stands with awareness of the self and the supreme mm. and this world itself is a huge beautiful human genealogical tree having different different branches different kinds of people colorful and they are with their own existence and everybody is important only to bring harmony mm. and also togetherness it is possible when we all connect our uh, relationship with one supreme as a father who is the seed of this tree so this is very simple that we are many children of the same father mm. only less we are aware of the father we have forgotten and we are holding our brother souls and uh, Uh, again of the different branches coming to the roots god is the supreme father who has established a code of conduct the way of life in the beginning and which was respected as a deityism in the beginning mm. later as the tree grows many branches also expands in the same way different religion is the expansion of the same one mm. and once again 
to go back to that roots we have to understand the supreme as one father mm. who is the universal mm. father and that's how all religions comes back so to what the you same are saying platform. is we need to go back to the seed we need to water the seed usually we water the seed not the branches get connected the to the seed mm. we have to water the tree roots but mm. get connected to the seed mm. and this connection i think is the basis for all religions to come yeah. under one number like because we you. are now connected to the only one one branch mm. but not aware of the seed and seed we are searching and that is the universal father and i think there is something beautiful in this benji once you get connected to the seed naturally you get connected to the whole tree of course. in other words yes and then we start respecting each other mm. he is our brother soul he is our brother soul mm. maybe they are different but they are with the same uh roots mm -hmm. means connected to and therefore we have to see each other mm. with the connection of that seed mm. then we respect everybody mm. i think we, even when we look at people the first thing which come to mind is that which religion he belong to so i think we can practice it in a some another different way so that this level of consciousness is not there difference is the beauty of this tree mm. but only the thing is i have to honor them and uh, understand the reality what they have this is very important because when we are connected to the seed we actually are connected to the whole tree and rather than looking at a person as he is belonging to one particular religion uh, we can have an attitude of brotherhood the word brotherhood comes when we visualize somebody in the form of a soul mm. otherwise religion is also the word which has come with the recognition of a person who has taught something mm. for example buddhism we see buddha who has become an instrument to teach something mm. and the followers have recognizing themselves as buddhist named with the instrumental mm. but here again i see the body and therefore i feel i am different from another person but even the soul conscious stage which spirituality teaches us that whether they are believing this religion or that person or whoever but they are my brother souls mm. brother souls means the soul is point of light which mm. not having any gender and, and maybe uh, the soul doesn't have any religion as, as uh, such uh, yeah not in the form of a physical level mm. like uh, named behind any mm. human being mm. and therefore the true nature of each soul is to experience the essence of peace and purity mm. i think benji if we continue looking at everyone as a soul all these problems in the name of religion will naturally stop so i think that beautifully answers that question so uh, that is one of the ways we can make a change in the world very simply consider yourself a soul when you are looking at another person consider himself also a soul and many of our problems will get eradicated so now it is time for us to go into the last session of this topic that is the attitude virtue and reflection part so benji what is today's attitude and today's virtue today we shall take up the attitude of being essential hmm. sometimes we go in detail and hang up somewhere and that creates lot of uh, misunderstanding or maybe wrong belief and essence is out of everything let us take what is right and what is really needed to me and the supportive virtue i shall help myself with the virtue of divinity hmm. when we see whatever the human beings are making effort with the belief system or religion or any other uh, way of life what we spoke so far related to the food system and all ultimately what we want to gain or experience is total divinization mm. and soul basically is divine and in course of time when we come in touch with the nature get influenced we lose our divinity so once again i remember the divinity is my true nature and i have to come back mm. so my journey has taken me very far away and out of that perfect divinity and once again with the connection of supreme i bring back that divinity benji the thought itself that we have been divine once 
and now it is time once again for us to go back to that divinity the thought itself is beautiful now i think if you can give a little bit commentary on that particular aspect sit in a comfortable position quickly take your mind to the beginning of your journey in this world of action i started my journey from my abode of silence where i was in my seed form filled with all divinity i was divine i was essential hence i was powerful when i entered to this world i played a very beautiful and best role as a divine being and therefore the elements in the nature was obeying my order and giving me only joy and happiness as i enjoyed to the maximum my energy level started degrading slowly i came with the influence of elements of nature i lost the control over them still further my journey continued and i became totally slave to the elements of the nature now i realize my lost position has to be regained with the understanding of the soul the master i the soul the master of all these elements i slowly regaining the control over them and divinity is my true nature unholiness is not the nature and therefore i now start making my thoughts divine my vision divine my speech divine my actions divine and also i support the body physical body made up of elements support the body with food which is divine helps me to regain total divinization om shanti thanks a lot benji once again from the heart and i think our viewers also have enjoyed this session of meditation thanks a lot for coming in and joining thank us you. today thank you so that was all for today and we will continue this discussion on food in the next episode also because still there are questions regarding how to make our food pure so that our mind is not polluted again so friends keep along with us in this journey any questions regarding this topic any queries any suggestions please feel free to email us or call us until we meet again it's a goodbye from all of us हमारे YouTube चैनल गॉडलीवुड स्टूडियो को सब्सक्राइब करें और साथ ही हर नए वीडियो के अपडेट के लिए बेल आइकन को क्लिक करें